Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. If you all can, before we start, if you all can just let me know if you all can hear and see all three of us. If someone can just write yes on the chat, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Vishal. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second webinar at Clean Middle East magazine. And this time, we are decoding cleaning chemicals. Cleaning chemicals are one of the most important products to use in any facility. They range from multipurpose to specific chemicals, even ones used specifically for disinfection. In the past decade alone, the concept of cleaning using detergents and other agents has slowly evolved. People are now more aware that a chemical necessarily need not be fragrant to clean well. Moreover, the advancement in dispensing equipment has completely revolutionized the way cleaning is done. But there are challenges. What kind of chemical to use? How much is too much? If you go above your prescribed ratio of solution to water, will the result be the same? How do you handle chemicals safely? What does it do to yours and the building's health? There are a lot of questions uh, that still arise despite us, being using, despite us having used chemicals for a long time now. And we answer all this and more today with our panel of experts. So they need no introduction. Um, we have Alp Aksoy, who is the Vice President of Hospitality at Diversity Africa, Middle East and Turkey. He started working in the hospitality industry about 25 years ago and has globally managed diversity teams for esteemed hospitality brands to deliver hygiene solutions for improved guest satisfaction and the safety of guests and staff while reducing total costs and the impact on environment. He has initiated efforts with governments in Egypt, Turkey, Poland, and China to improve the perception of hygiene and food safety in restaurants, stressing that good hygiene is a prerequisite for sustainability and life itself. We also have with us today Nitin Kolte. He is the technical lead at Diversity Middle East and Africa and is a passionate expert in the development of innovative cleaning and hygiene solutions and their implementation. Having R&D experience of 11 years, Nitin has a deep understanding of regulatory requirements and application needed in the region. Guiding the regional business partners for years, he is truly committed to optimizing cleaning operations and costs via setting the right application practices in place with the right chemical selection. So thank you so much, Nitin and Alp. Um, it is a pleasure to have you and an honor to have you both on our panel today. Thank you, Shantan. Thank you very much, Shantan. So before we begin, just a couple of things for our audience. Uh, you all can ask us questions at any time. Um, you have the chat box on the right where you can have your discussions. You also have a question uh, tab where you can put in your questions. And we will be addressing them according to the relevance of the point being discussed at that time. So um, we're going to begin with a very, very simple question. Why are chemicals important in cleaning today? Gentlemen, if you all can, uh, either of you can start. Excellent. Uh, you said it's a simple question. Uh, in our lives, it's very complicated, actually. Uh, I'd mm -hmm. like to start by saying welcome to the wonderful world of cleaning chemicals. Well, actually not. <laughs> I'm sure whoever dialed in today already knows a lot about cleaning chemicals and how to use them. Uh, and we will do our best uh, with Nitin to answer any questions or interactivity. We would like to have your interactivity and we will try to do our best uh, to clean up uh, about any 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 requests that you might might have uh, before going into the to the chemicals i think we need to talk a little bit about cleaning because it's a very interesting subject these days in the sense that right now cleaning and hygiene came as an enabler in our lives for us to be able to live the life that we want for us to be able to go out to the restaurants, to the movie theaters, uh, or even to schools, to our businesses, uh, it became obvious that we need the good hygiene and good cleaning practices. Interesting though, that uh, even though this is extremely important, cleaning is a, is a, is a thing that's played down. I mean, imagine uh, people now are asking, did you, did you wash your hands? So when you come out, come from outside, uh, there are people in the in the family. They're asking, "Have you washed your hands?" And many times you find yourself answering yes, even though you didn't. Or if there is someone in the family who continues to wash their hands or disinfect their hands, 
there are times that people look down to that person as being too nitty gritty. Now, again, we need to understand the fact that cleaning and hygiene is an enabler uh, from this point on in our lives. Wasn't it before? It was. It's just that the challenge was too far away when we had the case of SARS, when we had the case of uh, H1N1, the bird flu, the swine flu. Right now, it, is, it became so obvious for us with COVID-19 that we will need proper hygiene and cleanliness without playing down the importance of it in our daily lives and also for our businesses to make sure that the business is sustainable and within everybody thinking and working the same way, uh, we will be making the, the, the countries that we live in more sustainable, especially for places, for, uh, for, for countries who are thriving in hospitality or FMB. We really need to make sure that they are welcoming from a, a, a hygiene perspective that any guests who show up feel safe and uh, taken care of. Coming to the chemicals, I think chemicals is actually, although although with a lot of technology, a lot of process training uh, and ingredients coming into the recipes, uh, it gets quite complicated. It's actually a quite simple operation. Uh, I think we need Nitin with his expertise to come into the picture now and, and tell us about the inner circle, right? Sure, sure. I think uh, when we talk about cleaning, importance of uh, chemicals in the cleaning, the best way to explain is through the inner circle. Inner circle is, you know, is a basic, uh, and we can say it's the heart of any cleaning process. So this is actually made up of four factor: time, temperature, mechanical action, and chemical. So maybe uh, maximum all of you might have knowing that these are the factors which we use for cleaning, and where a chemical play a very important role. Why? because we have a challenges in current life with other factors like we have issues with steam costs so we cannot increase temperature everybody want to be done in the fast and there are also issues with the mechanical action to be provided because of the manpower right so what this inner circle shows is whenever you need to compensate any of these three pillars chemicals play a very important role and right chemical and right selection of chemical and right process can give you this deliver with your desired uh, expectations. So, Nitin, can I ask you a question? Yeah. It's very interesting that he's in our New York office. I'm in the London office. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at each other still. OK, uh, if we had a very strong, very potent chemical, mm -hmm. does that mean actually that could reduce the time of the cleaning process? Yeah, it can reduce time or it can reduce even a mechanical action. So it depends on the chemical, what type of chemical you select, and it also depends on how you apply this chemical uh, on the process. Within the same way, if I increase the temperature of a process, does that mean I can compromise or play on the other objects here? Can I, can yeah. I get away with less mechanical action? This is what this inner circle talk about. You, when you compromise on one factor, you need to compensate with other factors. Uh, this is valid for all general cases. There are some special cases, you know, there are limitations. So you, when you talk about temperature increase, there is always limitation to increase temperature. There's always limitation to increase time. There is always same case for chemical and mechanical action. However, in plus and minus, you always play with this factor. So if I have the right chemical, I can actually manage, especially the time, because in, in the business to business environment we are in and hospitality, yeah. time actually means money. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So if I have the right chemical, I can also make sure that we deliver faster. Mm. Yeah. And if I have the right product again, probably with uh, more recent technology, I can also reduce the temperature, especially in a laundry or kitchen. Exactly. You are perfectly. Yeah. And I can save on the fuel or energy costs. Exactly. You reached the point. <laughs> and does that also mean that if I had a lot of time in my hands, I could get away with using no chemical at all? No, I, you still need some chemical. You know, of course, you can clean with water, but then it's infinite time. So, of course, you can, uh, if you have more time in your hat, you can compromise a little bit on other factor. However, you cannot read up in, uh, completely with, with the chemicals many times. 
And what are the examples of the mechanical energy that comes into this picture? Mechanical actions, you know, there are different way of mechanical action when we talk about, uh, you know, the process. So, uh, like you have machine wear wash or laundry, then you have your mechanical action coming through the machines. But when you do a manual cleaning or a, any cleaning process ha ha happen in the food processing factories, there are a lot of manpower involved with a brush, with with a you know manual machines which are they putting and putting a lot of efforts there, you know, and that's through that's contribute your mechanical action. So if we if we were doing hand washing like we would do at home, okay, or for big pots in in a, uh, in a hotel, yeah, that probably means because it would burn our hands, the temperature cannot be too high. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the chemical cannot be too strong because yeah. again, it's hey, hands are involved. <laughs> but we will need considerable mechanical energy and probably a lot of time, more time. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course, if you don't have right chemical, of course, you cannot use harsh chemical, but there are new innovative chemicals which, which can be used. But yes, if in that case, you need more time uh, to wait or you need more mechanical action to use. That's why, you know, when you do a pot wash, you rub it too much. Which reminds me, uh, is, is there another dimension to this graph? Like, because also at hand dishwashing, we also need to incorporate more water than automatic washing, right? Yeah. Water, yes, water is very important. Uh, that contribute a lot uh, to your cleaning process uh, on both sides, good side, bad side. So when you have high temperature, you need more water to to take this temperature drop. Uh, you know, after finishing the cleaning, uh, if your hard, if your water quality different, then you need to select a different chemicals. So okay, water is one of the most uh, important factor other than these four parameter in any cleaning process. Excellent. Thank I think that is the basis of any chemical cleaning uh, operation uh, and mm -hmm. any, if you want to get any of these higher or lower that shows up in the other one. So if we have a strong product we can save on time, if we have high temperature we can save on the chemical, if we have a very good machine uh, which can handle good scrubbing we can again save time and temperature and Possibly with the new technology moving in, uh, the other dimension of water savings actually show up in our lives. Correct, absolutely. In fact, um, what I also, uh, you know, garnered from this is the fact that you have, um, you also have to have the knowledge of where to use what. Like when you were giving the example of pot washing versus, say, hand washing, you can't increase the chemical in a hand wash, you know, because you are definitely going to ruin your uh, skin and other things like that so I, I think whenever a cleaning manager or a uh, you know housekeeping manager actually looks into the sinner circle they need to know where to apply what at what time agree right? and, and and in our daily lives actually we live with this because in our heart in our essence lies the sustainability of our customers and when we mean the, cu the customer we don't only mean the business of the restaurant or the business of the hotel it's the staff yeah. inside and also the guests that they actually serve to. Uh, therefore, in, again, use of the right quality chemicals is extremely important for us to manage the rest, including the safety and sustainability of the people who are in the operation. And mind you, with the right chemical, you will always be, uh, I'm going to simplify it, you will always be saving money at the end of the day because you will be saving on the time, you will be saving on the temperature and possibly because you use less mechanical energy, your asset lives will be, will be more sustainable. Absolutely. So effective chemicals are the most important thing today uh, if you want to be sustainable. Correct. Okay. So then let's move on to the next question. What are the types of chem chemicals available? How, how, how can they be used in different uh, applications? OK, uh, so you know, um, when, when we say uh, to divide chemical in multiple types, there are multiple definitions based on, you know, uh, it can be defined on the nature of chemical, nature of application, type of soil. However, broadly can be classified in three things, uh, acid, chemical, then you have alkaline chemicals and a neutral chemical. So when, when we say acids, they are very good descalers. 
so they are working very good for water scale removal dust removal that's why you use them in your washroom your alkaline chemicals they are very good decreasers and they work very well for any animal so vegetable based soils uh, and that's why you know you end up using alkaline chemical too much in your kitchen where you needed this type of soil and the neutral okay. chemicals are the one you know where uh, you anticipated that chemical may come in contact with human skin or uh the places where uh, you think that uh, the substrates or, or when the substrates are very much sensitive to harsh chemistry like acidic or alkaline okay right so this is a very basic uh, definition or di divideation of, of chemical however you know if you go further then it can be divided for based on different parameters like you have uh, surfactants so it is foaming non foaming chemical so you use a foaming chemical like uh, in the plant where you want to clean the vertical surfaces a processing plant you want to clean a wall where you want to keep yeah. your chemical remain longer on the surface you use foaming chemical other yeah. example for non foaming when you want to use a chemical in machine wear wash or a laundry you don't prefer foaming because there a foaming can create issues with your mechanical efficiency okay. right then then we have chelators which support for water hardness so there are chemicals based on that then uh, you have a uh, uh, like uh, 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 different type of solvents for different type of soils and uh, there are different type of this uh, chemicals based on disinfectant ingredients for the formulas like uh, for okay. example we have a chlorine qac alcohol hydrogen peroxide these are chemistries no you know we are using from uh, these are the more traditional chemistries we are using from long time and every chemistry every molecules or, or every uh, product we talk about has its own plus and minus like when we say a chlorine is a cheap it's covering uh, it's very good disinfectant but it has uh, it is corrosive in the nature and it has a lot of smell issues and it can discolor your substrate or, or fabric when you go to qac they are, are okay but they are slow reacting when you go to alcohol they are fast reacting but they have a flavility issues right uh, so mm. uh, these are all old traditional and there are new technologies currently in the market when we talk about these types of chemical like accelerated hydrogen peroxide ahp technology they are more towards green side so what they do they take care of all negative points uh, of this chemistry so they are fast reacting they work as a cleaner and disinfectant they sustainable very well they don't have uh, any impact on environment and you know uh, health safety so these are the te these technologies are doing very good now in the market uh, and uh, these types of products are very much preferable nowadays so if i was to un understand this right mm -hmm. so acidic is for washroom where there is scale yeah uh, alkaline is for the kitchen, kitchen soil, for, yep. for grease removal yes and neutral products are actually when we really care about the asset and in our normal lives we would like to go for neutral products exactly and now there is disinfectants in our lives mm -hmm. and we are we are kind of learning into what qac or quad is we are learning into how we can use chlorine as a disinfectant we are using how to use alcohol as a disinfectant mm -hmm. And there are, of course, other high technologies like chlorhexidine yeah. or accelerated hydrogen peroxide yes. when we might need more, we don't have the time and we want to deliver efficacy in shorter times. And possibly we, we want to make sure that the surfaces that we clean remain risk-free. Yes. I mean, I remember from my past, chlorine was a miracle product. So in traditional cleaning, chlorine actually takes care of everything. And I, the, the problem with chlorine, it really takes care of everything because after multiple uses, it it eats away the thing that you're cleaning. If you had beautiful silverware, uh, you were going to find out that there is a lot of uh, corrosion happening on it after our, after multiple cleanings. Or if you had this beautiful shirt, which was blue, it's not going to be blue anymore. If you're lucky, you're going to have a light blue shirt, but hey, it's going to be very clean. So there is a protection of asset beside the cleaning process. Uh, I think we have a couple of questions, so it's great. Thank you for asking. So there, maybe we can make this a little bit more real and live. Uh, 
Shahuri, I think, Shahul, yes, I think, I yeah. hope I'm saying it right, is asking about rust removing. Uh, I think it's acid that's great against uh, rust. I remember uh, in the past, again, traditionally hydrogen fluoride was used against rust removal. Uh, Nitin, by the way, I'm in your territory, so if I make a mistake, please help me. No, 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 you're right. Uh, you're right. So hydrogen fluoride actually turned out to be very cancerogenic in time. That, that's what we learned about it. And responsible companies actually either discontinue the use of it or they put them in certain formulations that their delivery uh, are not as fast, uh, but they are combined with other substances in a formula to make sure that the user is actually safe. We used to have an R&D uh, director in the company uh, used to say, you had one spot of hydrogen fluoride in your hands. You'll remember that when you have cancer in 10 years. So again, Chemicals are extremely simple, or cleaning and hygiene operations are very, very simple. If you have the right partner with you and the right solutions, uh, if you are going to go and remove rust, possibly hydrogen fluoride is one of the most effective methods to use, uh, really. Uh, and there are people who are still using it. But again, is it worth that you got rid of the rust to die earlier? to be very honest. So there, again, it's going to be acidic, the product you're going to the use. The product has to be acidic, of course, but as you said correctly, you know, which acid you select is very much matter, you know. Uh, generally, we always say about, about the cost, but uh, the other factor which is very much important for chemical selection is, is the quality and the right chemistry, which may not have any health impact on your, on, specific, on, the, on the worker or who's handling this chemical, right? So Correct. just for example, when we talk about just a risk removing, I will never recommend a fluoride acid, though it is the best to do that. Like the people are using might be sometime uh, uh, hydrofluoric acid or, you know, uh, that is also another strong acid, which is also not, which is working very well, but not recommended always because of it has again a carcinogenic effect. The best product is you should go with a formulated product. Formulated product, what these do actually, it support you for cleaning, your rust for cleaning your surface with acid, but it also has other ingredients which reduce the active acid required for that application and as well as, you know, make the pro application very simple like it is supporting for easy rinsing, it is supporting to not release too much of, you know, health uh, conscious like it, it will support to not release too much of fumes and all. So it's always recommend to select acidic formulated product, maybe based on phosphoric acid and other surfactants. Uh, for rest, uh, rest removing. Thank you, Nitin. Uh, Shahul, uh, we just answered your question on uh, chemicals used to remove rust. Uh, in case you didn't get it, just let us know. Maybe we can just give you a quick summary. Um, we have a question regarding Tasky, but I think we'll come to that when we talk about equipment, Al. Uh, we could. Uh, I think we might need a little bit info, more information into it because crew is a product within the diversity portfolio, but Tasky is a big umbrella name. So there are a lot of products in it and mostly are machines. Uh, I might have an answer to that, but it might not be exactly what Deepu is asking for. So, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, coming back to chemicals, um, what I wanted to understand is, um, Nitin, you, you were talking about chlorine and QAC and alcohol hydrogen. So uh, all of these come either under acidic or alkaline? Or is uh, the composition like that? No, uh, let's say acid, neutral, alkaline, this is a one parameter. OK? Yeah. Now when we talk about acidic detergent also have a surfactant, alkaline may also have a surfactant, neutral may also have a surfactant. When you talk about chlorine, QAC, or any other disinfectant chemistry, then uh, they also fit in specific type of base chemistry. Like chlorines are always in alkaline chemistry. So you will always okay. see chlorinated products which are al uh, alkaline in nature. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide, so AHP type of new chemistries, they are more on acidic chemistry base. Okay. Right. So <laughs> alcohols are you always find more of neutral QACs. You will find in both plus and minus, you know, 
but uh, they are not related they can be fit in any specific criteria and there are some limitations as well this is okay. shanti it's very interesting i i always uh, actually compare our lives to of doctors so when a doctor really goes medicine on you it's very hard to understand when they talk medicine <laughs> so they can, can talk chemical medicine from our and uh, even though, even though again we we play cleaning down uh, a lot if you're if you're working with the right companies, uh, if you have the right expertise next to you, uh, you don't need to know these details. But we assume they're actually very simple. Everything cleans everything. Hey, water cleans everything. So these are not totally wrong uh, uh, statements. But then if you're working, especially in a business to business environment, or now that with COVID-19 in a heightened alert with regards to our hygiene, we really need to look into how we, how we, who we are partnering with, what we are working with, what products are we using. These are these are right now important choices that we make in our lives, and we really yeah. need to make it uh, take it seriously. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's let's just move on to the next question, which will kind of support what we're talking about. Um, you have detergents, you have sanitizers, you have disinfectants. Now, the COVID-19 situation has uh, kind of helped us refresh our memory uh, with regard to, you know, what is a detergent, what is a sanitizer, when do you sanitize, when do you disinfect? Um, but let's let's uh, talk a little more about it, you know, uh, how in, in terms of the composition, number one, as well as when do you use what? Okay. So, uh, you know, detergents are very simple. Detergents are, are the one which is defined for cleaning your uh, cleaning the activity or cleaning the substrate. Okay. So purpose of detergent is to clean. That's it. Very simple. And detergent contain all, all in So when we talk about ingredient in this three formulation, it is pearl plus minus same. Okay. However, the purpose, they can differentiate based on their purpose. Okay. So detergents are mainly for cleaning. When you go to sanitizers, Sanitizers, this word, you know, sometimes has different definitions, uh, like, uh, and uh, because there is no standard book definition for this product. However, sanitizers are more referred to the product. They can clean and uh, give some type of disinfection, some level of disinfection. Uh, however, that disinfection is not up to uh, like uh, high level uh, disinfection. They give like, I don't want to say that log reduction word because again, it will be too technical. However, when we say the sanitizer, it is a low level of disinfection for the substrate and the last term is a disinfectant which are for the disinfection purpose and it is used for high risk areas like hospitals and other where where you need a product which is a broad spectrum effective against multiple range of pathogens like bacteria viruses and they give very good log reduction which is uh, expected for that application okay so um why do you have to clean before you disinfect okay so it's deep and uh, it's very much important uh, first again it is more important than which product you select okay so if you select a product which work as a cleaner and disinfectant then your pre-cleaning process can be simplified but let's say you select a product which is only a disinfectant and not a cleaner then it is very much important you follow a right process, clean surface well, and then disinfect. The reason is very simple. If your products are not cleaner, and then you don't clean the surface, then your disinfectant will not work. They are not designed to work in a soil area. So your soil react with your disinfectant active ingredient, and it doesn't get a required disinfection efficacy on your surface. That's why read uh, we need to read a label very properly for the product we need to understand the claims for that product from the supplier very well if it is a cleaner and disinfectant then you can just uh, remove a, do a pre-wash or like removing the you know debris or or loosen soil from the surface and then apply product clean it but if your product is only disinfectant then you need to use another product as a detergent clean thoroughly rinse it and then apply disinfectant to get the desired desired result, what you are expecting from the process.
so yes actually very very well said uh, mr nitin it was uh, very comprehensively said and i think we um, at least i know about me i understood it even better uh, <laughs> so this is for uh, the people who are listening in today uh, we put up a poll on um, our chat box which talks about whether you read the chemical uh, labels on chemicals before you use them so let us know we want to understand a little more about the kind of behavior uh, you know that is seen in terms of using of chemicals till then we'll move on once we have some responses in for the polls we'll talk about that but till then we'll move on um uh, shanti it's interesting uh sanitizers disinfectants i'm actually very happy to learn sanitizers are actually cleaner disinfectants and mm -hmm. uh, frankly disinfectants are in place to be able to neutralize the viruses and the bacteria who are actually challenging our lives today and mm. the dirt on the surface we wouldn't like the dirt on the surface to steal away from the efficacy of the product to to neutralize these forms so we want the detergent part of a detergent disinfectant product to take care of the dirt and the part that disinfects has the has the right place uh, and a product left ingredient left to be able to do the disinfection which is the most risky part this is why we are doing the hygiene and cleaning in the first place absolutely yes thank you thank you so then we have the chemicals in place we're talking about the labels we're talking about all of that but how do you use them effectively to clean um let's let's address that question right now um what are the kind of tools that are used what are the kind of applications of chemicals um uh, if you all can just highlight that a bit for us nitin and alp um i mean again for all the people that are on this call i think cleaning cleaning is a part of our lives with teams or that we do on our own uh, at home uh, cleaning just requires a media to be able to distribute the product on a surface and probably some water and the right chemical and with some mechanical energy you, you can actually do it that has been what we have been doing in the last century actually within mm. the within the within within the last decades now we have mechanization coming into the picture so if you remember the sinner circle where mechanical uh, movement is a part of the cleaning process uh, machines so this this could be a dishwashing machine this could be a uh, so sing, uh, a dishwashing machine to wash the dishes sure uh, a single disk machine to clean the floor uh, mm. or, or even a toothbrush which is the mm. mechanical energy right now uh, they actually make our lives simpler in improving improving the efficacy of the products as we do uh, i think for the last two decades uh, we are moving more on to microfibers uh, we are very very much into microfibers because microfibers on their own also deliver cleaning besides the chemical so it actually creates these safety approaches for your operations because at the end of the day you might not be having a great day or your team member might not be having a great day they might miss on the right product uh, the, the the additional use of microfibers uh, for one thing they can help you reduce the chemical use another thing if you're still using the chemical as, as, as it is it's going to create a lot of safety in your delivery in in cleaning more important i think uh, because of the mechanical uh, energy they, that they provide uh, with the chemical they actually deliver you a faster result on any surface and again probably within i think i think i need to tell you about this a little bit within the chemical uh, within the cleaning process uh, we have we have seen that the cleaning uh, chemicals only hold about 46% of the total cost so total cost meaning the labor uh, the time the energy spent if you're if you're actually heating up the water or anything 
uh, if you if you have machines involved in the in the process, without the cost of the asset that you're cleaning, it's around four to six percent. Now that actually means if you're using the right product to manage the ninety four percent of the cost, you have a you have a chance to have a more efficient way of cleaning. So microfiber together with with chemicals actually deliver you that that time. If you have machines coming into the picture, again, that is going to deliver you uh, a better time, a better result, a cleaning result in a shorter time as well. Uh, okay. Within that, we really need to talk a little bit into the cleaning machines as well. I mean, basically, it starts with the vacuums, the vacuum cleaners. Uh, even though they're not chemicals, they're a part of our cleaning lives. Uh, and there, if you're in a hotel, you need to watch out that again they have they have benefits that are not about only about cleaning. The benefit of a vacuum cleaner is about that it needs to be robust. It shouldn't be broken down very easily. It needs to be silent because if you're cleaning up a guest room, there is a huge possibility that there is another guest resting in the next room. Uh, and then it should be it should be a uh, energy efficient because in a hotel unlike in our houses these machines work six to ten hours a day so each and every moment how much power they are actually using how much energy they are using uh, in a hotel with 200 to 500 rooms it becomes truly substantial so there are new products that are new new innovations that actually combine all these together, which actually I, I find them quite good investments because they actually return the money in terms of energy that you have paid in the first place to buy them. Another thing, for example, that's been introduced to our lives within 2020 uh, are the foggers. Uh, I like the foggers in the sense that it actually gives you the process to enable disinfection. Because disinfection at the end of the day uh, needs to create a wet space. We will talk about this a little bit in the, uh, in the next questions as well. But it needs to remain wet. The product used for disinfection needs to remain wet on the surface to be disinfected for a certain period of time. So if you look at all the restaurants that we're going to, or like the gentleman on this picture cleaning up a, up, up a desk, our generic use of disinfectants today, you can see what we're doing in, in the market. We yeah. apply it on the surface and we actually quite quickly clean it with a cloth or microfiber. And because we let the product remain on the surface, we believe that it's delivering the disinfection that it needs. Now, if that product is actually capable of delivering disinfection in 15 to 30 seconds, which is normally in the case of exhalated hydrogen peroxide or alcohol, uh, that, that could be fine. But if you're using a product with quad, that might actually mean you might have to wait from two minutes to 10 minutes. And using a microfiber, you have unfortunately uh, gotten rid of the wet on the surface because you had a guest coming to that restaurant, to that table, and you have removed the product out of the time that it needs to deliver the cleaning result, the disinfection result that you needed. Now, fogging actually is the way that you wet a surface. <clears throat> so within the fogging uh, operation, uh, you might have the good time to be able to deliver the, the, the time for the to deliver the disinfection. Uh, on the other hand, fogging again, delivers a very soft mist, very light mist. So we need to be sure that there is no wind uh, or movement of air to move the, that mist away from the intended surface. So frankly, in our company, we, we are not 100% about the delivery of fog. Uh, we actually like pulverizers instead. Uh, which has heavier droplets. So with heavier droplets, wherever you're, you're aiming to deliver the disinfectant, 
you actually hit the right place. Again, the game starts once the product hits the surface. Uh, we have to let it stay wet as according to the label. And if that label, whatever the label is saying, if it's saying it's two to 10 minutes and we don't have the time or our process doesn't allow us 10 minutes of wet time, then we need to go and search for another product which can deliver results for us uh, in less than a minute for the disinfectants. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Alp. Uh, very interesting information. We're going to have to, uh, you know, think a little more about the pulverizers as well, because I think foggers and, uh, you know, these kind of equipment are right now currently what, um, you know, people are talking about. So uh, it's time for people to also be aware of similar technology that can be much more effective, uh, according to what you said. We have a couple of questions. Um, I, I want to address that before we move on. Uh, one of them is from Mohammad Altaf, who says that bakery industry has equipment that is heavily contaminated with irremovable black carbon. So what is the best solution or kind of chemical for that? Um, we do have uh, someone from diversity talking about the, you know, the product that can help it. But if you all can just tell us a little more about the chemistry of uh, what kind of product removes black carbon. Okay, so may, 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 may I say something? Okay. Well, this is this is an extremely hard question, and believe me, I think I think at the start of my career, uh, 23, 24 years ago at the company, uh, one of my managers actually tested me with this. So he gave me aluminium pants uh, with totally black carbon on it, and he said, "I want you to remove it." Uh, and and on Monday when I'm back in the office. I want to see this clean and nice shining. And believe me, uh, I tested a lot of things. 23 years ago, technology was in a different place, of course. Uh, and I made a mistake and we lost half of that pan. So it is a very hard question. Thank you for asking. I'm, I hope Nitin has an answer to that. Please tell us what did you use first so that we know what not to use okay without losing half of the pan pan, okay. tray yeah. so yeah so when we say a bakery the most important point which alp said is is this uh, aluminum or it is stainless steel maximum time it's aluminum so if it is aluminum you know we need to use a product which is safe for aluminum first of all what the product you need to use that should be safe now i'll come to the product we the what type of chemistry we need to use for that okay so if you go to uh, you know the basic uh, we're talking about a type of chemical acid alkaline neutral you know? here you have carbon soil or a soil which is coming from the food right so your alkaline chemicals will work very well in this scenario now your soil is carbonized it is already burned you know so your your uh, that is already uh, you know carbon oil soil and already uh, you know the very hard to stick on the surface so just chemical is not good enough you need to use a temperature uh, you need to use a temperature along with alkaline chemical uh, chemicals uh, to soak that pan and and they, it will give you the results there are uh, uh, chemicals like uh, carbon remover available like if you search you will find the or you can take uh, our company even we have the range of carbon removers which are not very much alkaline chemistry but designed in a such a way that will work for such types of, of, of pan remover however again the most important it is aluminum aluminums are net not always safe or the uh, al sorry alkaline chemicals are not always to be safe to use on aluminum and they need a uh, extra formulation so that's why you select alkaline product, but it has to be safe on aluminum. Again, if you want to keep your product, if you don't want it to disappear, you need the right product here. And it needs to be alkali with some protective in it. Yeah, exactly. uh, heat speeds up the process. As far as I know, there are technologies also within our company right now yes, that sir. you can do with minimum heat. But then, of course, you need to be giving the time for the product to work instead. Yeah. So again, cleaning is a way of compromises. Do you do, do you use the strong product to take care of the cleaning very quickly? 
Do you or do you compensate with temperature? Or if you want to save on energy, do you reduce the temperature, but then uh, sacrifice on a little bit of more time? Correct. We go. We, everything... These are these are the these are the questions probably uh, the people who are on who are listening right now answer on daily lives. Yeah, yeah. What about what about stainless steel? Uh, is it a similar thing? Do you still go with alkaline and then have something to protect the stainless steel from uh, the chemical? I think it's easier, right? Stainless steel is is more resistant for chemical. Uh, of course, it's again depend on the grade you use for stainless steel. Sorry to be <laughs> again taking no, one. Yeah. But in stainless steel, we have different grades, you know. So the, the general grades used in industry is SS316 or 314. And these grades are quite OK with the range of chemicals we use. If your stainless steel grades are not good or if you're using a mild steel, then you, you may not like to use acidic product because acidic product corrodes them very fast. OK. However, if you say stainless steel and if it is a food factory, I believe it is always uh, a 314 or 316 grade. And in that scenario, you don't need to worry. You can use the same solution, uh, alkaline detergent for uh, cleaning such types of soils. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadeem. Um, Mohammed Altaf added to his question saying, usually the carbon deposition is on pans due to carbon burnt over long time. So. I guess then time also plays a factor here as part of your sinner circle along with the chemical, right? I have, yeah, I have one point to help because, I, okay, this is very general problem, you know, in this industry or even, you know, these pizza pans, they need to go through the cycle very fast. They need, they don't have a time to clean on after, after every, uh, you know, pizza or after every bread. What happens is your soil get built up on your pan time by time. In this scenario, the best way you uh, we should do is to use a solution or we say the condition solution, which is like a carbon removal solution where you can soak this pan overnight after completion of your work. You can put it there in overnight. Next morning you come, your soil is gone. You know, so these types of solutions are already available. It's also available with our company. And this is the best way to use for such types of product or such types of soil uh, cleaning. But again, if the build-up is has been on year after year, uh, okay. may, maybe maybe you there, need, there's no point of wasting waste time on such a product, either, yeah. such a yeah. machine. I'll say you need to do the thorough cleaning once, and then you use this product on a regular basis, so at, at least you will not reach to the same situation again. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Mohammed Altaf, I hope this answered your questions. Um, he also had another question on water tanks and pipelines having algae and fungal contaminants. What is the best chemical for cleaning and sanitation of water distribution line and reservoirs? Uh, most commonly used uh, chlorine chemicals for these types of things, you know. Uh, In the, yeah, it is for drinking water. I'm just going to read again. It is for drinking water or for non drinking because. You know, your selection of products is depend on the what type of this water line is. If it is correct, I'll assume it's drinking water just to make it, you know, on more uh, worse condition. Then you need to select a product. Of course, it can be a chlorine based product, but you need to select it from the company who has a right grade of chlorine or food grade of chlorine, you know, which can be rinsed properly and don't have uh, much impurities which we need uh, really need to take care. So, such application. Uh, you need to use a detergent or, or chlorine based uh, product for removing uh, algae and mold from this pipe. You need to use alkaline chlorinated product, but if when you use alkaline chlorinated product, you need to rinse it thoroughly to remove complete residue. And I will suggest you to use a formulated product from the right company so that, you know, uh, the rinseability, uh, the residuals remain on the surface. Everything could be confirmed. If you use a market product or local product, what happens is you may not able to you may be able to get the result on the cleaning performance, but you may not able to confirm the same thing on safety point of view. Like the product residues may be very high over there, or product may have multiple type of impurities, which you may not you know you understand just looking at the product, but may have a severe impact uh, if that water is for for drinking purpose. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, yes. That is so he said it was for drinking water and yeah. also um, he also asked what kindly specify which alkaline product will be possible for uh, will be best for shortest possible time for uh, 
I think you're asking about uh, the pans, uh, Muhammad. If you can specify. Can we? Um, uh, I'm getting wary about time, Shanti. Yes, we can. Uh, we can maybe, maybe we can have Muhammad's uh, details so that we can come back to him with a couple of uh, recipes and solutions. And I yeah. see Maget Sukari also asking a similar question, very specific. Yes. Uh, yes. Maget, the, the, the answer is probably uh, alkali or caustic based product. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of products like that in the market. Uh, it depends on how sensitive the surface is as well, but probably stainless steel. Again, uh, if we have your details, we can reach out to you with a couple of different solutions. Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll note it down and send them across. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, let's move on to innovations. Um, tell us about the various innovations that now exist in chemicals. Uh, innovations are chemicals are is a, is a interesting topic. Let, let me very briefly touch on them. Uh, innovations in, in, in chemicals doesn't necessarily be about chemicals. I think it, uh, innovations in cleaning uh, is what we should be looking after. And frankly, when you look at innovations in cleaning, there are a couple of things. One is the efficacy. So you need stronger products to be cleaning. But more and more in the last decade, uh, we also worry more about the environment. So we want the more sustainable environmental, sustainable products to be coming into the picture. So. The, this is this sometimes creates certain conflict. So the balance of environment and efficiency, efficacy uh, is a big question that responsible companies need to answer. Uh, and also when you look at again from an efficiency perspective, uh, you do not you do not want to clean something than to find out that it's not clean in the first place. So imagine you have a shirt. You put it in a washing cycle for two and a half hours at home sometimes, and there was a ketchup stain on it. So you washed it for two and a half hours, you take it out, and the ketchup stain is still there. Because you forgot to actually put detergent in there in the first place. Yeah. It is a part of the operation again, these mistakes, because and, and if, especially when you move on to the business to business environment. Uh, I think these things happen more than at home. And unfortunately, at home, we are we are washing with six kilo to 10 kilo machines. Uh, any mistake we do is six to 10 kilo mistake. But if we're in a hotel washing tons of laundry in a day, uh, and when the, the machines start from 30 kilos to 100 kilos, uh, very little mistakes. Like, like the dosing pump wasn't working and there wasn't enough detergent in the uh, wash cycle actually creates a reason for you to lose 100 kilos, 100 liters of water. So suddenly, suddenly uh, being able to watch this becomes very important. Again, to save money and also save time and also deliver results at, at the first try. So with that, Communication is coming into our lives. Technology, electronic technology is coming into our lives. Uh, cloud technology where there is monitoring, continuous monitoring uh, of an operation uh, and letting us know while we are do busy doing other things, letting us know if our cleaning operation is running in the right pace with the right products, with the right process. Uh, imagine a chef, uh, a chef, uh, at the kitchen is an artist. So they want to do certain things very quickly and amaze the customer. And unfortunately, yes, they have to wipe, make sure that their dishes are actually clean as well, because then the art uh, will be shadowed by a little bit of dirt on the dish. So they don't want that to be happening. But they don't want the cleaning process to be the major part of their lives either. Right now, the technology that there is uh, we have uh, allows us for him to have uh, instant emergency uh, number uh, emergency alerts on their tablets or phones to say, uh, "Huh, perfect. Uh, 
which is on the screen for the IntelliDish technology, uh, feeds all the information that's happening at the machine at that point in time. And he knows if everything's running smooth or not. So if the temperature of the any washing cycle is down, again, with the center circle, we know that then it, the machine may not deliver the cleaning that we want. He will know. If there isn't enough chemicals in the compartment, again, that he will not have the desired results, he will know. And that will actually help him to clean only once. And doing things at the first go in a business to business environment means saving time, very expensive. Uh, saving on labor, again, very expensive. Uh, making sure an asset like a, uh, like a dish or in the laundry uh, linen doesn't get washed more than it needs to. So it protects the capex or capital expenditures that have been done. So it's extremely important. Uh, coming to other innovations, uh, in terms of chemicals now, uh, a, a lot of ingredients are being tested, uh, especially with COVID coming into the picture as well. Uh, we have we have enzyme technology that is coming. Uh, we are talking about once we once we clean a surface, uh, there is continuous or residual effect of cleaning on a surface. Uh, it is it is a it is a very attractive point again. Uh, we need to be very careful because once, for example, in healthcare industry, when we talk about residual cleaning or re residual disinfection, uh, you find doctors, especially doctors, becoming very wary of this concept because whatever residual is, it gives you a sense of security. But you actually don't know. So let's say a, a product says, clean clean my surface with x product and i'm I, it's going to stay clean for the next 24 hours but you actually don't know what kind of a dirt challenge that surface actually had to face within the last three hours and you actually don't know uh, how much residual strength the enzyme that is on the surface has to to take care of that challenge but you have you might have this false security feeling that on the 12th hour that the surface is still clean and again uh, downplaying cleanliness uh, with things like hey it, it was there only for three seconds so that i can eat it it was there for five seconds so that i can still eat it the five second rule three second rule yeah. sometimes it's 10 second rule uh, you might really be putting yourself into considerable uh, danger uh, these technologies are coming. There is silver coating technology that is coming again, which uh, somehow enables the bacteria and the virus not to be able to reside, hold on to the surface. So all of these technologies are coming, maturing, uh, hopefully making our lives uh, much simpler soon. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Okay. Uh, now that we are running a little short on time, like we're a little delayed, we'll just go to the next point um which is a very important one where we're talking about dispensing and dilution uh can you all touch upon the importance of it and why it needs to be done and how um in a very basic uh, brief manner uh, i think you're going to ask me about disinfection at the end as well right yes i am yes so let, let me try to combine all of these together uh because we've been having this conversation with nitin as well uh, at this point in time, when we're talking about hygiene and cleaning, we are mostly talking about uh, chemicals, again, being enablers for us to live our lives as we, we are used to it. We want to be, we don't want any lockdowns anymore. We want to be able to go to the restaurants. We want to be able to go to uh, schools. We want to go back to business, to our offices as much as we want now, nowadays. Uh, but we yes. want a, a normal life. And mm. for, for any chemical to deliver that, there are a couple of very important things. One is its concentration, which is also about its efficacy. 
So a product diluted to 100 times or a thousand times, depending on where you're starting from, may not be the same as a product that has been diluted one to ten times, mm. or or that that is ready to use, so that uh, you wouldn't be putting any water to dilute the product any further. You just use it as it's recommended for your use. So that is that is the concentration of the product. And yes, there are dispensing and dilution centers in a business-to-business -business environment so that we do not risk uh, for people to make momentary decisions. Either saying, I want more product in here, so let me use more product to, to deliver more efficacy, which might be unnecessary. Or, hey, uh, I might like to save some money at this point in time, so let me put half a dose everything will be fine but everything will not be fine anymore because these things are no different than medicine right now and right. if the medicine tells you to use two tablets to remove the headache you want to remove uh, use two tablets not half a tablet mm. so so there are dispensing and dilution centers machines that actually deliver this uh, avoiding human mistake now uh, the good news is that this is a, a this is evolving as well every day. Uh, like we, there are there are bottles with a simple uh, connection to the water line can do the dilution and the dispensing at the same time in in any environment. You can go and buy a 1.5 liter bottle, and that bottle can deliver for you 150 kilos of product. So imagine that the how much warehouse space that you're saving uh, mm. that you don't have to worry about hey am i supposed to order the next one uh, very soon or even better you don't have to worry about the plastic that you are putting into the environment because imagine 1.5 liters of a product uh, is is hold in certain plastic compared to 150 liters of product that's far ahead uh, in terms of uh, the plastic usage uh, so that's a little bit about dosing and dispensing, but more important, the efficacy, uh, the concentration of the product leads to the efficacy of the product. Mm -hmm. And that efficacy is about all these nines that we are seeing in the market. So everybody's claiming on their labels that this product can uh, reduce the bacteria 9.9 .9 times, nine, uh, or 9.99%. Or they say 9.999%. So there is the battle of the nines. We joke around sometimes. And this is another concept, again, downplayed. Because all these nines are quite close to 100. So 99.9 and 99.99, they seem to be very close. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, when we are talking about micro living beings, like bacteria and virus, uh, that 0 0.0001 or the last, the next nine that comes actually might be a bit uh, difference between you getting sick or not. Mm. So we really need to be careful about uh, what we wish to achieve from the disinfection. Uh, if it's a critical point, that we are cleaning or not, so that we need to watch how many nines there are. Normally, the definition is uh, for you to get rid of virus, you need four nines, which we call log four reduction. So you need four nines, 99.99. And to get rid of bacteria, you need five nines, which is log five, 99.999% reduction. So 99.99 is nothing, is, is not... It is not um, for bacteria, but it's for virus. So you want to get rid of virus, that's four nines. Yeah. I oh, mean, oh, so you mean 99.99, that's four nines, is for uh, viruses, right? Yes. Lock four. And 99.999 yes. is for um, bacteria. Exactly. So you want... If it's a critical place uh, that, for, for example, a surface that you might be preparing food or eating soon, you would like to go for five nines. 
or if it's a place that your guests frequent often and there are a lot of people touching those surfaces again to reduce the contamination uh, probability again you might like to go for nine uh, five nines mm. that's that's how, how it should go uh, besides the nines the next most important thing is contact time because this is where we make the most mistake again mm. Uh, because it's it's very interesting. Imagine you're going to a restaurant with your family today. Hmm. Today, today you go to the restaurant that's going to take hygiene seriously. And thankfully, when you when we are in GCC, you can see that the governments are being very responsible. Companies are very responsible, training everyone that's possible. Associations are working very hard. Uh, owners are working very, very hard. But again, there are ways that we are accustomed to. One of the ways that we are accustomed to is, hey, you put the product on a surface and you might even use a microfiber to clean it with. Everything's fine. We have done everything that we can to protect the next customer. So imagine there is a family who's leaving the table and you are waiting with your kids uh, about to get that table. Even you do not expect the, the, the cleaning people come, coming on to spend too much time at your table. On the other hand, you also want to be safe. So if the product used at that point on the label says, wait for two minutes, again, the product being wet on that surface, that's what it's supposed to do to deliver the safety that you're expecting from that place. If they came over, put the product on, wiped it away with a microfiber and told you and your family to sit down now, it's safe. Unfortunately, uh, it is not. It's it is not as safe as you would expect it to be. Yep. To be able to deliver that, again, you need the right product. But even the right product today, uh, the best products which can deliver uh, the, the, the least time that can be delivered is 15 to 30 seconds at this point in time. So even then, when they spray the product in, they need to take a breath before coming in there with the microfiber and removing the wet out of the surface. Okay. One more thing, of course, because now alcohol as a disinfectant is a part of our lives. Again, we need to watch what alcohol does in terms of cleaning. Uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, dermatitis or skin problems that are developing, especially at schools, because now kids are going and disinfecting their hands as they're supposed to. Uh, by the way, let's not forget who is actually telling us to wash our hands, not use alcohol disinfectants. 20 times a day to, to, to keep our, ourselves safe. They actually say, go and wash your hands. Uh, but hey, reality of our century, we need to be fast, we need to be quick and efficient and practical. Yes, we use alcohol disinfectants. And yeah. we just need to be careful about the product of choice because there are alcohol disinfectants which also has ingredients to protect your hand. Mm -hmm. So you might get away with them easier and just to be cheaper again uh, there are products in the market which doesn't necessarily use the right raw materials or uh, the right accompanying chemicals uh, and they might they might result with you know uh, skin problems sooner yeah so so whoever is making these choices uh, we used to have a saying uh, at home, my, my mom used to say, I am not rich enough to buy uh, cheap shoes. Because when you buy cheap shoes, you will have problems with your feet, the, you know, uh, eventually you will have problems with your body that you will have to go to the doctor. And sometimes, especially in the past, going to the doctor would mean that you would spend more money than the shoe itself. Exactly. Uh, and, and actually a cheap shoe will actually go away earlier than a, than a quality shoe as well. So using the right disinfectant today, the right quality one, is as if using the right medicine. So if you go 
for if you go for the quality and you go for the efficiency of the, the right if you choose the right product with the efficacy and efficiency the overall cost that you're going to pay let this be your health let this be the time let this be the reputation of the restaurant that you're cleaning the the, the post potential costs or actually the real cost is actually always going to go down so if there is anything if there is anything that uh, the viewers of this webinar uh, are going to put there in the in their pocket please do not try to save on chemicals because chemicals actually enable you to save more on real important stuff mm -hmm. quality chemicals deliver safety on the environment they make sure the staff and the guests are safe they make sure the assets that you're cleaning remain safe. Let those be linen, let those be dishes, let those be the special designer uh, tables you ordered for a restaurant. Mm. Uh, and overall, uh, because they deliver quality cleaning in the first place, mm -hmm. uh, a trust develops in between the user and the product, and then you use less of that product as well that we have seen over and over again yeah thank you al um there's a lot i think a lot that people have to take away from this uh, webinar I, I in fact have learned so much more uh, you know through uh, the session i'm just going to address one last question i'm sorry to the people whose uh, questions i haven't been able to address maybe we can take them on later on we'll talk to al and maybe get your uh, the answers but Muhammad Altaf asks this question about uh, usually concentration into time is used for disinfection. Are there any CT values in the cleaning process? Okay, so you know the CT co uh, concept, uh, concentration into temperature. You know means the concentration multiplied by temperature. This work or this commonly used in your water uh, treatment. So when you say a swimming pool disinfection, they always talk about the CT value. And it's always uh, most commonly used for a chlorine based disinfection. So you have a chlorine ppm and a contact time. Okay. So they say it's one ppm and five minutes. So one into five, five is the city value. Okay. However, you know, when you talk about now outside this water treatment or what's the swimming pool, it's very difficult to say a city value because at the end you don't have one ingredient to attack. It is just not a chlorine. You have a different ingredient. And when you talk about different ingredient, you can say chlorine, yes, it should be 500 ppm, it should be, you know, uh, this much of quantity, but because it's just one raw material, you have a data. But when you go by formulated product, you cannot say that this is the ppm of that product, right? I mean, it's always based on the supplier and the, the reports they have. So it is very difficult to put a generic CT value in other than water treatment portfolio where you have a range of uh, disinfectant ingredients are used. So you still need to stick with, with uh, the label. What is the concentration dilution mentioned there and what is the contact time mentioned there? But one way of one way of measuring the output of the cleaning could be ATP tests. ATP tests is protein tests that are done uh, normally in kitchens. So you clean up a surface then do an ATP swap to see if there is residual protein on that surface. Uh, this, is, this is not really done in public areas or in a housekeeping area. Uh, it can be done uh, so that you can use the product that you use for uh, at a certain concentration and with a certain process which delivers that time, actually delivers you uh, total clean. Okay. That can that 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 is a you can measure the output like that. Great, thank you so much, um, Alp and Nitin. Uh, I think this conversation could go on for a little longer, and we'll still have more to learn. Uh, but this was a very very nice and a very very insightful uh, session. So thank you so much to the both of you. And I'm going to end this now. So I'm going to thank the audience as well for being so engaging for asking uh, so many questions. And um, we hope to then see you all again next time. And uh, thanks a lot again, once again, uh, Nitin and Alp. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Shanti. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Thank you.